I'm Daniel Clark, and I did a lot of the post-production sound as well as quite a bit of uh, production sound for a lot of the movies. I started with Stealing Time. I knew Alex from a connection and another thing we worked on, and, and then I went on to Defenseless, worked on that quite a bit. And then I really got into the post-production of Forest Falls. Since then, I've pretty much been involved with all aspects of sound for every Friday Night film. In general, there are four parts to sound in a movie. There's production sound, which is the stuff that's recorded on set, the dialogue and everything that's there. And then there's sound design, which is the overall concept of the sound. So we want it to be really dry, we want you know, a lot of stuff to be going on, or very minimalist. And then there's sound editing, which is putting everything in its right place. And then there's mixing, which is making sure it all balances and you can hear the dialogue and you can hear the sounds you want to hear. She's just allergic. Get! Yeah. She's not allergic. <laughs> By the time we got to the film last year, we had done a bunch of movies before this, and we were getting pretty good at what we did with sound and everything. Um, and it's a seemingly simple movie, it's just people talking at a party. But all the ambience around them, the entire party, all the music, the footsteps, people, like little people in the, talking on the side of the frame that you don't really hear, but you kind of, you know that they're there. That was all put in in post. And so if you watch the movie without any elements, it's kind of silly. <sighs> Yeah, actually, um, so could you just give up so I gotta get going. Okay. Okay, we'll talk. Hey, Daniel! Hey, Daniel! Oh, hey, dude. Hey, oh, jeez. Can you hold that? Yeah. We did a lot of recording on site with the crowd. We sat around and, and recorded people yelling and counting down. I walked around the room recording them yelling in the living room from the kitchen and from the hallway just to kind of get different natural feelings instead of trying to fix it all in post with fake reverbs and fake filters. And I also recorded a countdown a bunch of times. I had Michael uh, leading the group and I had him start counting I think at 20 seconds and then not look at the clock just like you were at a New Year's party. So you'd start counting, people would get carried away and be way ahead of the time and then you'd come back on track at the last minute and I feel like that's a nice little touch, real realism there instead of people just being every second we're saying the line. <laughs> Because Friday Films is a small crew, it's actually kind of great doing sound because a lot of times you'll do production sound as well as post. Sometimes when you're on set you can really just you say, say screw yourself. You know it sounds bad on set and you just hope you can fix it later. And a good example of that would be Imperfect. Please say she was stabbed three times. They found her clothes inside of the dumpster along with the- So for the blood. scene when Emma meets Holloway in his apartment, there's a loud buzzing light through that whole scene. I was just listening to it, just kind of covering my ears, pretending it didn't exist, thinking, I have to fix this later, I hope I can do it. You've got a motive. And I saw you at the scene of the crime. Michael asked me, can you fix that? I said, sure, yeah, no problem. Which seems really, oh, that sounds really easy, but it's actually a lot of precision and you have to go back and tweak the settings and really kind of isolate just the parts you don't want to hear because if you apply it too heavily, it sounds like a bad MP3 or a bad audio file. You've got a motive. And I saw you at the scene of the crime. So for the sound of the flashes in Imperfect, we really wanted to emphasize them and kind of give them a grace and kind of that 40s feel. So today a modern camera sounds really digital, like clicky, it's, that's all you hear. It's several layers of sound, so it's the actual shutter of a 7D. And then we actually had an umbrella, just opened up an umbrella really fast a bunch of times, and so we used that. So we had to layer a bunch of sounds together in order to get a sound that we felt was warm, realistic, but also had like this sense of magic to it. Yeah. 
Anamnesis was a really good film for me to work on because there's a lot we could do with surreal soundscapes. It was a good example of not just adding foley and making a sound sound like the sound on screen, but it was it was a way to really kind of get into the head of the character. The Long takes a good example of something that goes through a bunch of different universes. It's very real at first, and then things start devolving and things start deteriorating. And then you hear the surprise party, there's a dance party, and then these things start going chaotic, especially by the time he reaches the stairwell. Mr. Kleinman, immediately! Hey! Hey! So we took a lot of sounds from the movie. We took bells, the sound of those chimes, extracted that and started putting that into like this kind of electronic composition to just build these crazy textures. We would morph sounds, stretch things out, put them deep in the background, reverse them, put reverb on them. Just so it all existed within the universe of the movie, but it kind of added to it in a very surreal way. The end of the long take, the bathroom scene, is entirely ADR, which means that the actors had to come back in afterwards, after the edit was made, and re-record their lines of dialogue. We tried to record it on set, and it was just a noisy bathroom with lots of terrible reverb, but we couldn't get the mic in close because there was a reflection in the mirror. So we had them come back into a, another bathroom that sounded much better. It was much smaller, with more baffling. We could kind of shape it the way we wanted it and we had them re-record their lines while watching the takes. I'm sure I could watch it and nitpick, but I haven't noticed the many times I've seen the movie. I got fired that day, and I walked in here on accident, and you were standing right there by the sink. Adam, I can't protect you anymore. What? I know the truth. And if I'm in your head, you do too. Usually you don't notice the sound as you're watching a movie. Um, and I think that's kind of what I'm always shooting for. I want it to be unnoticeable. I just want people to be immersed in the, actually what's going on. It's, it's very musical to me, even, even in the movies. There's, there's a rhythm and there's a music to it all. So there is the actual music, but there's also the sound design, which fills in the gaps and adds texture and it adds emotion. So I think that's why it appeals to me. I don't know. 